Hi, it's Wendell Odom, and welcome to this chapter plan for ICD1 Chapter 17, WAN Configuration. This is the last chapter in the book that introduces new material, and this chapter plan video just gives you some hints and tips about how to go about reading and preparing for the exam using this chapter. Everything in the chapter is fair game. Let's get on with it. First off, there's some brief config about how to configure point-to-point -point serial links with HDLC, the default, and with PPP. It's pretty straightforward, pretty much boils down to using the encapsulation command. Um, the rest of the chapter is about how to configure internet routers, particularly for the features called DHCP and PAT. But the way we show the configuration is through a tool called Security Device Manager, or SDM. So, Keeping that backdrop in mind, let's think about this. For an internet router, a router connecting you to the internet, if it's a consumer router, we actually don't want any config. We want the user to have to do absolutely no config and have it all work. So there's a lot of automatic assumptions that happen in a consumer grade router. Now for CCNA, particularly for ICND1, what Cisco has essentially done is they want us to understand the settings if we used a graphical interface and just read the words what are the settings we would need to make to configure DHCP and PAT well if we had a consumer grade Linksys router at our home we would have whatever that graphical interface is it's web based to connect to that Linksys router instead what Cisco chose to use was the equivalent tool to give us a graphical interface to an enterprise class router so it guides us through the configuration using nice graphical screens. And that tool in the past has been called SDM. Well, it turns out that this product is no longer even sold by Cisco, but it's been replaced by a new product called Cisco Configuration Professional, CCP. Regardless, the point is that you know the settings. What can you set for DHCP and PAT? Much more so than what a particular screen looks like. Finally, for DHCP and NAT, when we talk about those topics for ICND2, you'll actually see the configuration commands, the CLI commands used to configure those features. Um, so you'll get more and more about this as you walk through the path towards CCNA. So it sounds like a lot. It's not a lot. I just wanted to give you that perspective. Now, once you get through the first pass and you understand things, for your second pass, I would say briefly review your PPP configuration. And then for review, I'd say name all of the settings for both DHCP and for PAT. Not to remember the specific SDM screen so much as to know what you can set from that graphical interface and what those things mean. For instance, which interfaces are inside interfaces and which interfaces are outside interfaces. Then when you get to part review, well that should happen pretty soon after you do the second pass review because this is the last chapter in this part. You probably don't need to do a lot more. You might want to review a few things on chapter 16 since it's been maybe a little bit of time since you've looked at those, but you may not need to do a lot. Then when you get to final review, I would again say make a list of all the settings that you can think of for DHCP and for PAT and make sure you understand those. Don't worry about the fact that you don't know commands for DHCP and PAT. Uh, and just know that when you get to the ICND2 book, assuming you're marching towards CCNA, you will see the command line interface commands for these features. Well, that's it for this chapter. Congratulations for getting through all the new material in the book.